Playing. This is the chords of Michael Schenker, and I have featured Michael several times on this channel. We've done uh, two three-for-all lessons, you know, looking at some of his licks. Last year I put together the chords of UFO, and I've had more requests, you know, to feature Michael Schenker. I love Schenker. So I started thinking about it, and I thought, let's look at some of his chords, because really, you know, in Michael's playing style and his legacy, his leads and solos and licks and riffs and all this single note activity kind of takes, you know, center stage and it overshadows, you know, his rhythm and chord work. And even though historically, if you go back and look at early Scorpions, UFO, Michael Schenker Group, um, Macaulay Schenker Group, or really any incarnation of uh, Schenker's career, you'll see he uses lots of power chords, you know, basic major and minor triads, partial chords, like little dyads, you know, and pieces of chords. But all of his riffs and rhythms, you know, rock, it's very aggressive lots of energy, and it really does, you know, kind of just set the stage for him to take these wicked, you know, guitar solos and stuff. So if you're a fan of Michael Schenker, you already know this, and I'm not really going to be sharing anything new here, but if you're new to Michael Schenker and his musical world, you have to realize that several things, the time frame, for one thing, like early Scorpions, and then also UFO, directly influenced, you know, all the 80s rock that came, you know, after the 70s. And his work with UFO was in the 70s. You know, the Michael Schenker Group album was 1980. So there are examples, you know, from his self-titled uh, debut. There's also examples from Assault Attack with Graham Bonnet on vocals. And I love Graham Bonnet. And that was basically post-Rainbow and right before, you know, he formed Alcatraz. And so Assault Attack is another great album, and Michael has a lot of albums. And if you've been watching my channel, you'll notice that I get hung up on certain albums or certain eras of a group. And that's going to happen again, you know, in this lesson. We're really only going to look at two different albums. But keep in mind, Michael Schenker has a whole bunch of music you can pick through. But, you know, leave it to me to get stuck on two of my favorites. But there's some great stuff in this lesson. So here we go. The opening that's armed and ready from the Michael Schenker group album and you know just typical of Michael Schenker's you know playing style we're just completely rocking out and it's something like this <laughs> power chord moving down to a D and then eventually hitting this A before we kind of change it up you know these little single note riffs right there so the first pass is this and then right there you're gonna basically move from the C to C sharp and grab that E right there and then do the first part again Right there when you get to that A power chord, walk down G, F sharp to E on the low E. And you have to think how influential that riff was. You know, that's 1980 when that hit the streets. And I guarantee you, know, your Randy Rhodes, your Kirk Hammett, everybody influenced Warren D. Martini, Robin Crosby, all these players that when they were young, they heard that riff and their ears perked up. I guarantee. I know it did. Uh, one more time here. <laughs> just punches you right in the face, which is so good. Hey, up next is Victim of Illusion, which is also from the MSG album, and this song also rocks. Something like this. <laughs> Right 
they were literally, you know, banging on the low E string and this E power chord there. And then you're gonna basically move back to this D. And then you're gonna basically separate that. So it's kind of like you're doing four low E's open, four E power chords, three open E's, one D power chord, and then three as far as the grouping there. second time, he's basically hitting that D power chord twice, and the second time he adds vibrato, which I'm a sucker, you know, whenever a guitarist hits, you know, a chord and adds vibrato. I like hearing that movement, it sounds good. back and forth, you know, kind of changing up that rhythm ever so slightly. Eventually you do hear this riff, which that also is very influential. There's a ton of, you know, of guitarists that use that riff. Next to the song Broken Promises, which is from the Assault Attack album, and this is really cool. It's got this kind of funky groove. It's all about the groove for this one. Uh, something like this. <laughs> banging on the C, or I'm sorry, B power chord, and he's kind of, uh, you know, doing some muted strums and kind of grooving with that B, and then you basically hear this D uh, power chord to a partial A major right there, and you kind of hear those muted strums in there, and then right there, grab that B power chord and move back to a partial A right there, and then you hear him uh, play the D power chord twice, a couple muted strums, and then that A partial chord with a couple muted strums, and then back to the B again. Something like that. I like that little sneaky A. You know, kind of hiding in there. you could also play that D power chord here and then you could move to that A power chord but I'm hearing it like that I'm hearing that little change instead of you know, down there same thing just it sounds different up here and then you hear this little uh, like funky groove right here this like single note riff Yeah, 
Next up is Desert Song, which is also from Assault Attack. I think this is honestly my favorite Michael Schenker group song. I have a lot of favorites, but hearing Graham Bonnet sing the song and Michael's just rocking out, you know, great song. It has this kind of dreamy harmonic intro and there's like a pedal tone, you know, like low E just banging, uh, something like this. <laughs> so much he was really just going between the 12th 7th 5th and back to the 7th again you know with that low E pedal and then you hear this partial D move to a partial E minor right there there's like this little single note riff there on the low E back to that partial D to E minor. And then right there, you're basically playing, I mean, you could think of that a couple different ways. Um, like an E minor seven add nine. Uh, you could think of it a lot of different ways. There's your, you know, add nine, if you want to think of that kind of related to an E chord. But just think of that partial, you know, D major little, uh, you know, two notes there, the, the root and the major third. But then you're circling that with all those open strings. And I'm still hearing that low E, you know, pedaling. So I'm relating that to E, or E minor. But anyway, you've got that. This. You gotta think of the time frame again too. This is 1982, so this is before Metallica, before Megadeth. That totally reminds me of like little parts of, you know, uh, Orion or maybe Peace Cells, and you can definitely hear you know, uh, Shanker's influence on early metal and thrash, for sure, right there. But we're doing, uh, it's all partial chords, and we have actually looked at these uh, chords before, actually, in, in the Metallica chord play, which that was a couple years ago now. But Michael's basically uh, served up this kind of buffet of E minor, you know, dyads and triads right there, little partial chords. So think of E minor, like Aeolian. <laughs> basically lining these notes, you know, from the scale on the A, and also on the D. And if you start thinking of those as dyads, like two note chords, then you're literally just grabbing, you know, say that E and that G right there. And then this little partial D. There, you're kind of doing this, right? And once again, we're just kind of targeting notes from E Aeolian, but playing them in these little two note, you know, clusters like that. And then right there, bang on that low E a couple more times, and then grab this, which is gonna look like a little piece of, you know, A minor, but we're thinking of this kind of related to E. Metallica or Megadeth fan or early, you know, thrash metal fan, you've seen those chords before, you know, a million times, but uh, more than likely, this is probably where it came from, or at least the influence, you know, with Michael Schenker. <laughs> Next is Samurai, which is also from Assault Attack, and once again, think of the time frame. You know, there are some stacked power chords, you know, in this song. And, you know, that's really common to see from Metallica or Lamb of God or somebody, Tool, whoever. But in 1982, 
there really weren't very many guitarists stacking these big power chord sounds like that. Um, you know, we hadn't really made it there yet. But uh, here's, you know, Michael Schenker literally just, you know, kind of plowing ahead like this. <laughs> G power chord, and then it's a D over A right there, a stacked power chord. So G5, and then this stacked, you know, D5 over A. And that's the stacked power chord I was talking about. Nobody was playing those in 82. I mean, Michael Schenker was. Metallica wasn't even a thing yet, so you gotta think. Then go all the way down to B flat, and that's B flat over F, another stacked power chord. double hit on that. You're kind of doing a quick change from B flat back to that F. All right, the last example is from the song Tales of Mystery. So we're back on the MSG album and it's actually performed on a steel string acoustic guitar. I just, I'm just using my nylon string because I like this guitar. But it is really unusual to hear, you know, Michael playing this way. You know, basic open position chords, you know, strummed around on an acoustic guitar. But something like this. <laughs> major 7 chord with that little fill. It's like a hammer on pull off there in the beginning. And then when you reach that F note, that's when you're going to pick through F major 7. And then right there you're going to hop over to a D minor and you're also playing with the sus2, you know, opening up that high E string. sus2 back to that F note. Alright, that's going to wrap this episode of Chord Play with the chords of Michael Schenker. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm a huge Michael Schenker fan. I just can't help it. You know, he has this conviction and energy and this feel you know when he plays and whether that's a solo or a riff or a chord or whatever he's doing it just grabs my attention and it definitely inspires me and i know he's inspired you know tens if not hundreds of thousands of guitarists all over the world and the big ones you know like randy rhodes and jakey e. lee and warren d martini and players like that they love michael Schenker, you know hopelessly and i do too you know definitely a great guitarist a legend you can always, you know, pick up something new or learn something from his, you know, his music and his playing style. You know, huge influence on everybody. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to Night Lessons, and I'll be back before you know it with more content material. Thank you.